Nobody's been down the bottom of the Perth Canyon before. Nobody with an ROV. Going 3,000 metres where nobody has ever gone before. There's challenge in that and there's victory in that. But what's more important is that we do it in a coordinated, engineered and managed way that we know what the outcome's going to be before we get there. Special. This is a, an evolution point in TMT as much as it is a wet test. So this is really the culmination of a lot of people's input into this ROV system. Uh, not only those around the table, those that fly it, those that build it, those that fix them, but um, um, everybody that stands in TMT, the 108 people that we have on site at the moment, through the purchasing, everybody that we, uh, we have offshore has contributed in some way to where we stand right now with, uh, with this test. We do have that, uh, you know, that nervous energy, not, uh, not fear, but just the uh, nervousness that keeps you sharp. Um, we're expecting it to go well. We build our ROVs, that's what we do. So there's nothing, uh, there's nothing contained in the test or in what we're doing that's new or different. We're just doing it at a deep depth, okay? So, uh, so you know, technically, I'm not really that worried about uh, what we're going to do out there, okay? But safety-wise, that's, that's, that's causing me uh, not to be able to sleep. So, when you're moving an ROV around that's a five ton, when you're bluffing out a LARS, you know, that weighs over 10 ton, when you're operating a winch that weighs over 30 ton, these things don't stop for flesh and blood. You get in the way and you become a, uh, you become a statistic and it's a statistic that we don't want to have. So the biggest, uh, the biggest success of this campaign will be is if we all come back on Monday and we've had no injuries, no incidents, no incidents. That will be the biggest success. Let's have a good, uh, let's have a good mission and uh, let's have a few stories to tell when we, uh, when we come back from it. Underwater, you never know what you're going to get. You know, it's an environment that is uh, that can look very peaceful at the surface and can be very violent down at the seabed. And um, and uh, when you introduce simplicity into harsh environments, you introduce um, robustness and reliability. And ultimately, for oil clients, that's what they that's what they pay for. So I guess it's with these cornerstones of functionality, design, robustness, and simplicity that have evolved into the Typhoon class ROV. So the tests include making sure that we understand how we're going to launch the vehicle, making sure that we understand the vehicle is ready for the, uh, the dive. So the risks don't end with uh, the technical development or the implementation of the design. The risks don't end until that vehicle is safely back on the deck of the boat and the job's been accomplished. To do that you need skilled people, you need good processes and systems, and you need equipment that won't let you down when, you, uh, when it's most exposed to the type of environmental conditions that you can't control. challenges I guess are that we're using a lot of equipment uh, that has been integrated together for the first time 
and uh, typically at this stage of an operation, you know, you would be integrating a system that's operated uh, as, a, as an integrated system previously, um, and we've had some issues in compatibility and interfaces, but uh, fortunately we've got through them. It has caused a few delays along the way. Um, there are all the usual risks of working at sea. You know, you're work we're working on a vessel that we're not familiar with, um, and uh, with systems on the vessel that uh, are not our systems, but uh, that is part of the nature of the business that we do. We have bridging documents which uh, effectively make a transition between our systems and the vessel systems, and uh, so far those have operated well. The ROV runs on hydraulics and we need to make sure that the water and the oil remain separated and that we can, uh, we can develop the type of horsepower, 150 horsepower that we need to uh, push the vehicle or, or, or power the vehicle underwater. We need to make sure those systems are not leaking oil into the environment or taking on water. But certainly in Total Marine Technologies history, uh, this will be the deepest that we operate uh, and a first for this class of Typhoon ROV. They have, uh, we have a few of them in operation at the moment, but they've only gone down to 1200 metres. So this is really the first qualification test for the time. After this, I guess it's, uh, it's completing the build of, uh, of the six units that uh, we're putting together for our client, which is TLO, and those will go and operate in Brazil for Petrobras. Uh, and a lot is riding on this, uh, on this test because there are a lot of other users who are interested in this type of ROV. And subject to this test going well, we believe there will be potential to build many more of these in the, in the short term.